Welcome back to Nickelodeon's Comic Corner Classic Less Known Classics. This is episode number 2473 and episode number 2367. First up, we have Cable and X-Force. Now, I did say X-Force replacing... Uh, what was it here? Oh, it was uh, Fantastic Four. And I decided to start with Cable and X-Force and then do X and Volume, X-Force Volume 4. This is so basically when I when I get to Volume 2 of the series, which, which is a reunion of the original creative team of X-Force, I'll be officially putting the book behind me. So, we're starting with Cable and X-Force Volume, uh, volume 2, Dead or Alive, which collected the issues 6 to 9. Yes, this, this, this series was written by Dennis Hopeless, did all 19 issues of this book. These issues in particular are done by Saba the Roca. Mostly put, what happens to these issues? Well, here's the thing about this series. For some reason, Dennis Hopeless had to where the Unity Squad became recurring characters in this book. I don't know why, but for the first year of the book, they practically appeared a lot in this book. For reasons not really explained. Also, with these issues, we have a brand new member joining the team. Actually, yeah, one. Uh, Boom Boom. Yes, Boom Boom, who is part of the original roster. Yep, she is back in this book. Mm -hmm. My guess is the reason why that Dennis Hulpa's added her to the team, probably because he's part, she's part of the original X-Force. Mm -hmm. Yes, and... They also do with the an alien from an island. Uh, Cyclops pays him a visit one of the issues. Uh, Sword briefly captures Colossus and Cable because they freed an alien. So Cable rejoins the roster after the opening story arc. Yeah, and, and of course we have the Unity Squad. Like like I mentioned, they're... It's like when, when the first volume is being published by Rick Amander, for some reason, they decided to have him appear in this very book for some reason. I don't know why. But they appear in issues 1 and 3. And they pop again for issue 8. They also appear in 9, 10. They appear up until issue like 14. And here's the thing about these opening issues for this book. Now, mostly put in a way, this book kind of basically takes place between issues... I think it was like... Five and six uh, takes place after issue four of the of the Candy Avengers. Basically, when they appear in this book, it basically filled in the gap between those issues because there was sort of a time skip between issues. These definitely were really good issues. I thoroughly enjoy them, and I'm gonna give Cable and X Force Volume Two Dead or Alive a nine out of ten. Uh, next up, we'll talk about basically the mini series I accidentally skipped. Hulk Smash. By Warren Ellis. Which I believe the cover is done by... Um, yeah, this is just two-ish miniseries of Hulk fighting the army. And a little bit from the point of view of basically an army person when he fights the Hulk. And that's literally it. That's all that happens over the course of two issues. Yep. But now we'll talk about the <clears throat> the Incredible Hulk issues. Yep. Now, yes, we're talking about Incredible Hulk. We're discussing issues 70 through 76. Yep, a seven issue story arc known as Big Things. Now, here's a fun fact about the next trade. I, actually, you know what? I'm actually going to reveal that when I talk about that one. Yeah, mostly put in these issues. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's written by uh, Bruce Jones, art by Mike Dale Jr. In the full opening issue, we have this character named Eric Matthews. Yeah, the first issue is pretty much a standalone issue. And then basically the big things takes up issue 71 to 74. We have guest appearance by Iron Man, and the main villain of the story arc is a guy named Richard Cummings. Yeah, he's like a serial killer. He just appears in these few issues, and that's it. Yep, he gets killed off here. Basically, it's kind of like Hulk in a small town. And the cover is basically the pick Hulk versus Iron Man. Iron Man after the story arc will also appear in the very following issue. And issue 76. And they return to Avengers. Uh, sadly put in this two, this is basically 75, it's basically like a, a double size issue. I at least got praised the fact actually they Marvel did this because, well, you don't see us often nowadays reaching 75. Oh no. Yeah, for some reason it's like that. So, Mike Didrick does the op does the first issue, but basically, he does basically 70, 71. 72's artwork, uh, he does that one as well. 73, uh, Dougie Brithwell, uh, takes over the artwork once again. Yeah, I'm not really sure exactly why he took over the artwork, but he did. But he's back on here, has to be gone for a few issues. He's here to issue 76, and then he's done. Well, he actually does do 75, that's somebody else. Mm -hmm. Also, the, there's a character named Ricky March. Yeah. She appeared a couple times in this book, and then she's done. There's also Nicole March. She, of course, basically only appeared in this story arc as well. Yeah, it's like Hulk in a town and also involving Iron Man. You could say so about that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And you would think of issue like 75 or after this dark. Nope, 75 is just a standalone issue. 76 sadly is the death of Norna Devana. Who is that? Emil Bolsky's ex wife. Yep, she sadly put died in this last issue. For some reason, the way this book was written, it's like basically Bruce Jones had it where. These that she and Bruce Banner become a romantic couple, and then supposedly Betty is hooking up with Doc Sampson. Yeah, that was really weird. My guess is probably now was this Bruce Jones' last issue he did for the book? Yes, sadly put, that would be the last issue he did for the book because Peter Dave returns to the book very briefly. Yeah, Doc Sampson, meanwhile, will later show up in Avengers right after this, and the leader. He, of course, gets try, they try to kill him off again. Yeah. I think it's like, it's like a third time they attempt to kill him off. And then he just magically comes back sometime later. And you're thinking, okay, so what happened to him at this issue? Well. He went over the She-Hulk. Yeah, I don't get a why in the world Marvel had it where for a little while, like, oh, any Hulk character, move over the She-Hulk because She-Hulk's on an ongoing series now. Yeah, apparently, like... It is just kind of weird, the fact it's like that. But I guess now, because I read this issue, I guess I can say my final thoughts on this run for Hulk. Yeah, Bruce Jones had a very interesting run for the book. Uh, for the start of it, it was okay. It didn't get better until a little bit later because some of the stuff he did was just plain weird. And if you're really curious, he started issue 34 for this, for this run. And 76 was sadly put his last issue. There is, of course, also the Hard Knocks book, which, of course, is not collected in the Hulk trade. That's, I think that's a separate book. Yeah, the Hard Knocks miniseries. Yeah, he would do that, like, right after, basically, his run wrapped up. Mm -hmm. Because that would be the next appearance of the Hulk, is it hard, in the Hard Knocks miniseries. But as to the main book in particular, well, he's done. 
Yeah, sadly put, basically, when he wrapped up his run on Hulk, I'm looking at basically what he did. He just did Hulk and Thing Hard Knock miniseries. He did a miniseries for Tomb of Dracula. He all, the last thing he did was a special session for New Hope, which came out five years ago. But before that, the last comic he did for Marvel was back in 2005. No, seriously. 2005. That was his last regular comic he did for Marvel. With, with the exception of the one-off issue he did in 2017. So, 2005. That was roughly 18 years ago. Yep. So, I'd say about a little part way into the run for Bruce Jones. When it got a little better. So, the run was okay. Sorry, but it, it, it's like complete opposite of seeing runs where it starts out really good. And it gets okay at the very end. Bruce Jones, from what I can tell, had an okay start. Not terrible, just okay. Though I thought his run was a little weird, not featuring any of the main characters associated with Hulk. Like, no, hardly of the Hulk villains featured his run. It felt like, basically, the way the book was written, it's like Hulk was set in a completely different universe. I thought that was kind of weird. And it seems like the only time you had a character who was not Doc Samson in this book who was not associated with the Hulk characters is when he had Iron Man show up toward the end of the run. Because Phil as a Hulk was separate from everything related to the Marvel Universe. It's similar in a way what happened with Punisher. So it's like Bruce Jones took Hulk out of the main continuity to have him do his own thing in his own book without having probably not be bogged down by continuity. And that may have helped the book. I mean, it's surprising his run lasted for about a few years. I mean, his first issue, 34. That book came out in 2001. November 2001, when the first issue came out. The last issue came out in August of 2004. So he was on this book for a little over three years. Yeah, a little bit, I'd say about three and a half years he did the book. So, I'd say for the, the, for, for, for the last story he did, it was pretty interesting. And I like the fact he did 75 and 76. But next particular storyline, we have the return of Peter David. Yes, I'm still working his original run, but... Yeah, here's the thing that comes with Peter David's return for Hulk. If you're really curious... Like... How long is his second run he did for Hulk? Yeah, because he takes over 77. You might ask, does he do the rest of the volume? No, he doesn't. Excuse me. He just does issue 87. So it's a pretty short run. 87. So, yes, the last two trades to discuss will be the Peter David issues. Yes, this very brief 11-issue run. And I'll be started doing that the next time I'm talking about this book. So, basically, I'm almost done discussing this run, which is amazing. So, definitely looking forward to discussing the rest of this run. And, well, once this run is finished up, all that's left to go for Hulk is just basically Volume 1. And, of course, Hulk Volume 2. I might replace with Hulk Volume 2 because, basically, I need to finish with that run. And, well, I could also replace with She-Hulk. That's possible. I could do She-Hulk. Yeah, that's not, the, that's not the thing I'll do. I think I'll replace with She-Hulk. But not right now. No, not right now. Okay, so that's going to be pretty much it for particular view. Uh, stay tuned for tomorrow for more videos. Like Super Sentai. And anime. And, like, one manga book. Well, comment corners, uh, right now I don't have any plan, but if there is, basically, you'll find out. But basically, I bet this is the last one I had to do for right now, so there's that, okay? Thanks, people.